immerse yourself. 1 Samuel 2.30 Wherefore the Lord God of Israel saith, I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever, but now the Lord says, Be it far from me, for them that honor me I will honor. And them that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Lord, thank you for revelation that's going to come forth today. Lord, may your Holy Spirit prick our hearts. May we receive instruction, and if we need it, correction, Lord. For any good father corrects his child. We give you praise, Father. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, and everybody said amen. May be seated in the presence of God. Immerse yourself. When we immerse ourselves into the kingdom of God, we make room. We build a habitation. We sell out and we buy in. We fully engage our lives into the word of God. Fully engage our lives into the word of God and let it intertwine into our very beings, into our hearts, and into our minds, totally and completely. And last week we went over honor. This week let's go over the word despise and esteem because the Word of God says, for them that honor me or give me weight, I will honor, I will give them weight. But they that despise me, despise is not hating, it's obviously the opposite of weight. The despise in Hebrew, baza, a verb meaning to disregard. A word meaning to disrespect. Yeah. It means to disesteem. It means to prefer something more than the thing despised. And it means, and this is what we're going to use a lot in, in, in the uh, message today, it means to think lightly of. Like I said, if you're walking into Walmart and you see a penny sitting down there, you're just, well, you look at it and you're gone. Why? Because it's light. You think light of it. Now, if it was a $100 bill kind of caught in the corner of something, just kind of floating around there, and you realize it's caught in a crack, and you see that, that, that has weight. You're going to give honor to that. That has weight and value. But that penny, you just walk by the penny. So that's what the Lord is say, saying, to think lightly of or to give no or little value to. To trample with the feet, to raise the head loftily, to look down on. Arrogance, the word despise, to treat badly. So when you're despising, as it says in the scripture here, it says, and they that despise me. In other words, they that think lightly of me. They that think little or give little or no value to me. He says, what will happen to them? He says, they shall be lightly esteemed. And esteem there, it means a verb meaning to be light, small, trivial, insignificant those who think lightly of me those that give little value to me well when they will be trivial and they will be insignificant we're going to read some word this morning so just saddle up we're going to go first samuel it's the scriptures that i i sent you last night we're going to start in 1 Samuel 2, and we're going to be reading a whole lot. Because I want to give some cons I want to give a background on this scripture. For them that honor me, I will honor, but them that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. So we're going to start in 1 Samuel 2. We're going to, we're going to go 12 through 17, then we're going to bounce from 22 to 25, and then we're going to end up from 27 to 30. And it came to pass. Nope. That's the wrong one. 
Now the sons of Eli were sons of Belial. That means of wickedness. Wait a minute. The high priest's sons were wicked? You better believe it. Well, wait a minute. These guys were like, you know, doing stuff in the house of God too. Yes, they were. See, we have lost reverence for God. No, I don't believe how hellfire and brimstone that God hates you. He wants to smite you and just send a lightning bolt down on you and bust you into another dimension. He loves you. It's the goodness of God that will lead somebody to repentance. He's not willing that any should perish, that all should come to repentance. He loves you. He longs to be for you to be with him. But now he does not like the fact that, listen, when we got stuff like that going on these days. We think of him as just this big grandpa in the sky that'll bounce us on our knee and he's just so full of grace that, you know, he'll just turn a blind eye to everything. Well, you can't take the fact away that he's still God Almighty. He sits on the throne and righteousness and justice is the foundation of his throne. And there's no fear of the Lord anymore. Because we've heard grace, grace, grace so much and praise God for his grace. But we went over that, didn't we, in Titus? What does, what does grace say? The word of God declares that grace says to, to live a holy and righteous life. That's what grace, if you really wonder, well, I'm under grace. Well, that's what grace is going to be telling you. We've already went over that in a, in a former message. It's in the book of Titus. Hallelujah. It's right there. You can go read it. And so we've done that even today that we have no fear of the Lord no more because we don't think God's going to do anything because he's just that good, happy old grandpa that, you know, we've never seen him in a bad mood. <laughs> Praise God that, you know, we, at least we've come out of the ages where, you know, you went to church and you thought God was angry at you. I mean, okay. <laughs> well, hallelujah. But he's holy and his things are holy. And he expects them to be holy. And we don't do that. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Amen. What's that temple? What's, what's the Holy Ghost have to put up with? Jesus. Yeah, before you start, <laughs> before you start saying, that, yeah, these guys up here, you know, the priests in the house of God doing all these things for the house of God. Well, you are a house of God. Yeah. What does. God's house have to deal with on your time. What songs does your house of God have to echo? See, we can understand it if we like, you know, you know, if, if you pulled up and you come in here and you started hearing Judas Priest being played or N.W.A., <laughs> something's wrong with that, isn't it? You're like, what in the world are you doing playing out in the church? Well, you're the church. What in the world are you doing having that echoing in the halls and the chambers of the temple of God? What are you watching? I mean, you know, people would probably, you know, I don't know. We might have more people than we've ever had out here in this church. But if we advertise movie night, Fifty Shades of Grey. See, you'd be like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Something's not wrong here. All these preachers are right. These churches are becoming just like the world. And da, 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 Well, what's the difference between playing it in here and, and it going into the temple in your eyes? Ain't no difference. There's no, there's no difference. Hallelujah. The Lord will separate the wheat and the tares. He will have his remnant. Now the sons of Eli were sons of Belial. They were wicked. They knew not the Lord. Like we said earlier, we're not going to do church out here no more. We're going to do heaven. Amen. There's plenty of places on Sunday morning, and they're full of programs. They'll give you a nice latte. They'll give you three points in a poem. They'll encourage you and send you on your way all in 45 minutes, and they're good at it. they got a system down, but they don't know the Lord. Just because you say, Lord, doesn't mean you, you might be a professor, but that doesn't mean you're a possessor. 
Hadn't you ever heard being around somebody that you're an expert in something and somebody... And then somebody comes along and they just want to join in the conversation and they have insecurities and, uh, and, and, and they want to make themselves to be appear more than they are and they start talking about the subject and it doesn't take too long that you, you're looking at them and you're like, they don't know what in the world they're talking about. Praise God, I can give testimony. We got members in this church that go to different Bible studies or different places and they're, and they're, they're just all in amaze because they're like, these people don't know the Word of God, but they're teaching it. They knew not the Lord. And the priest's custom with the people was that when any man offered sacrifice, the priest's servant came while the flesh was in seething with a flesh hook of three teeth in his hand. And he stuck it into the pan or kettle or cauldron or pot. All that the flesh hook brought up, the priest took for himself. So they did in Shiloh unto all the Israelites that came hither. I'm going to give you some background on this. Don't, oh, and he's sticking something in a pot and grabbing flesh. What is he talking about? Hang on. Yeah. Also, before they burnt the fat, the priest servant came. And said unto the man that sacrificed, Give flesh to roast for the priest, for he will not have Sodom flesh of thee, but raw. And if any man say unto him, Let them not fail to burn the fat. That's important. We're going to get to that. So even heathens realize, nah, That ain't right. I, all this ain't right, but especially this ain't right. We'll get to that in a minute. Presently, and then take as much as thy soul desireth. Then he would answer him, No, nay, but thou shalt give it me now. And if not, I will take it by force. Wherefore, the sin of the young men was very great before the Lord. For men abhorred the offering of the Lord. Thought little of it. Let's go to verse 22 through 25 now. Now Eli, he was the father of these two heathens was very old and heard all that his sons did unto all of Israel. So we heard about it. And how they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Yeah, that's right. They were turning the house of God into a hoochie mama house. Hey, girl, you come to worship today. You look fine. Come over here. Let's take a side trip. So what was going on? That's exactly what was going on. They were as freaky as they wanted to be. Verse 23. And he said unto them, Well, he addressed his sons, Why do you such things? Why do ye such things? For I hear of your evil dealings by all this people. Nay, my sons, or no, for it is no good report that I hear. You make the Lord's people to transgress. He's addressing it. If one man sin against another, the judge shall judge him. But if a man sin against the Lord, who shall entreat for him? Keep that on the screen for a second. Go ahead and read right over. This is, this is not the book of first opinions. This is not the PBV, Pastor Bobby version. This is 1 Samuel chapter 2 we're reading. If one man sin against another, the judge shall judge him. But if a man sin against the Lord, who shall entreat for him? Notwithstanding, they hearken not unto the voice of their father, because the Lord would slay them. But fathers, I want you to catch on to something. Eli said what he needed to say, but he never enforced it. And we're going to get into that. Well, we got fathers that care too much about their, their kids being their friend than them being a father. Because he had the authority to jerk them jokers right out of that world. Put them on the rear, give them the left foot of fellowship. 
He had the authority to do that, but he never did. Oh, we're going to get into this big time. If I am made you mad, you're going to get real hot before it's over with today. Go down to verse 27 through 30. And there came a man of God unto Eli and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Did I plainly appear into the house of thy father when they were in Egypt in Pharaoh's house? Verse 28. And did I not choose him out of all the tribes of Israel? In other words, Levi. To be my priest and to offer upon my altar, to burn incense, to wear an ephod before me. And did I... And did I give unto the house of thy father all the offerings made by fire of the children of Israel? Wherefore, kick ye at my sacrifices. In other words, insulting it, belittling it. Which I have commanded in my, habit in my habitation. In my habitation. And honorest thy sons above me. That's exactly what was going on. Well, I know maybe I should keep them for this or keep them from that, but I mean, my God, I mean, if I do that, then the, all the kids at school will think they're odd, weird, and, you know, I'm trying to get my kid to fit in. Did you just hear what you said? You wanted your kid to fit into the world? Well, I want to go where everybody's doing it, and if I don't, they're going to call me names, and I'll be an outcast. Amen. John the Baptist could care less whether he had the new Nike Airs or not. And honorest thy sons above me to make yourself fat with the chiefest of all the offerings of Israel, my people. Wherefore the Lord God of Israel saith, I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever. But now saith the Lord, be it far from me. For them that honor me, I will honor. And them that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. With many of the sacrifices brought to the tabernacle, a portion was given to God portion was given to the priest and a portion was kept by the one who brought the offering and the idea was that God should always get his portion first and God should get the best the fat on the offerings was dedicated to the Lord and the fat was the best part and therefore reserved for the Lord. The word tells us that the word tells us that the Lord's portion was to be burnt with fire upon the altar. You can see that in Leviticus 3 and Leviticus 7. And the priest portion was the breast and the shoulder. You can see that in Leviticus 7, also in Exodus 29. And they were to be boiled or sodden, the breast and the shoulder. Now these sons of e Eli wanted the best for themselves and took it. Oh, I'm about to come into your living room, sit down in your favorite recliner, grab your remote control and start sipping on your tea here in just in a second because fat offerings, priests, might not sound too much like anything that reminds you of everyday life, but we're getting ready to jump into that pool right now. The sons of Eli wanted the best for themselves and took it. Even the lay people, which acceded or give a consent to the wrongful demands placed on them, they were even more pious than the priests. Even they were like, well, now this is bad, but this is really bad here. You, I mean, not, not the Lord's. Now, you can take mine and take more for yourself, but you're going to take the Lord's? 
They were more pious than the priests and their servants and that they tried to get the priest to give the Lord his portion first. You see, Hophni and Phinehas, and that was their names, they preferred themselves above God. Eli preferred them above God, and they preferred themselves above God. Needless to say, they were not immersing themselves. They were not making room, and they were not building a habitation. They preferred themselves above God. That's what was offensive about this practice. Here we go. And I wonder if the Lord still feels the same way about the giving of what is His, the giving of what should be first, the giving of what should be the best unto others. And I am talking about the tithe. Well, that's horrible, brother. That, that fat, that was for the Lord. That was the best part. That should have been burdened given to him right off the bat, just first. It's the best to the Lord. What? The power bills, what? I guess God ain't going to get nothing this month. You giving God the first and the best? Because you're just like Hophni and Phineas. Phineas. Yeah. Let that soak in for a second. You're doing the same thing. You're taking what is God's and you're giving it to somebody or something else. You're not honoring God, so he says, I'm going to lightly esteem you because you're taking mine. You can have yours. I've told you the portions, but you're taking my stuff. You're taking the first and the best and giving it to somebody else. I am praise God ain't like me. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all would be, every one of you'd be in trouble. I'd be in trouble all the time. Because if I was God, I'd be like, you know, well, oh, you want to take the first and the best and you want to give it to that? All right. Two weeks later. Oh, God, I'm in such a need of something and this happened and I need direction and help. God, I'd be like, uh, go pray to that. That's where you gave your first and your best. Go, go, go pray over there. Leave me alone. You ain't honored me. Why should I honor you? You lightly esteem me. Oh, you think, see, that's what I'm saying. People think God's like a genie in a bottle, rubbing the right way, and he's just got to produce. We forget about him being God Almighty. You forget about him being the, the righteous judge and, and forget about him being Lord. See, Lord means master. So we don't, we don't, we, we're okay with the Savior part. I ain't going to hell. Hallelujah for that. We don't like the Lord part which is if you love me, keep my commandments and then don't call me Lord, Lord if you don't do the things that I say you do or, you know, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Or what did he say about, you know, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Put me above anything and everything. Oh, you don't want to do that? Not at all? All right, bad boy. I'll yawn, y'all. Go ahead. Go ahead and see if your false God that you've created is going to do something. See, we don't like preaching like that anymore, but that's W-O-R-D. Who cares? If, you can get in a place and sing about Jesus and Jesus, la, 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 we're having a good time, da, 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 but we better not go too long when we got on the schedule. Jesus, we love you, and we love you too, everybody. Oh, we love you so much. And you come in broke and you leave broke. You come in sick and you leave sick. You come in hurt and you leave hurt. You come in bound and you leave bound. You come in confused and you leave confused. Because you didn't come into this kingdom. You come into man playing church. I wonder if the Lord still feels the same way. I 
it's just amazing how people think God changed just because it went from Malachi to Matthew. What cha- listen, what changed, what changed was how we approach him. But he ain't changed. He's not changed. How we approach him has changed. Praise God. The veil has been torn. He's not changed. I mean, people almost think like you read this and it's almost like God's changed. And they'd be like, ah, do what you want to, what you want. You don't have to honor me and give me the first things. You don't have to put me first in your life. You don't have to love me with all your heart and all that other stuff. Eh, I said, Jesus, yeah, the blood covers you. You're going to be up here one, one day. So, you know, just whatever you feel like. I wonder if he feels the same way. Oh, what are you doing with the first and the best? Oh, hallelujah. When we despise God, when we think lightly and don't value God, we are lightly esteemed. See, it's a spiritual law. It's not like God's picking and choosing. It's a law. It's like natural laws. If you jump off the Empire State Building without a parachute, you're in trouble. Because gravity is going to say, hey, I'm a law. And I don't care if you're black, white, I don't care if you're young and old, I don't care if you're from America or you're from China, I don't care. I'm gravity. And I'm no respecter of persons. This is what we're dealing with. We're dealing with spiritual laws. It's just like uh, God is not mocked what a man should sow, sows that he's going to reap. I know the world calls it karma, but it's biblical, sowing and reaping. So if you're doing nothing but sowing bad seed, don't be surprised if what's growing in your life is bad crop. But on the opposite, you sow good stuff, just like I love it when, you know, uh, even yesterday it was raining. People who have seed in the ground love to hear the rain. So if you're sowing good seed, you can't wait for something to start popping up in your life. You're expecting it. It's just a spiritual law. Did he not say those that honor me, I will honor And they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. God's like, hey, I got my hands tied here, y'all. This is my word. This is my law. I'm not just going to make special arrangements and special occasions for special people at special times. I'm no respecter of persons. This is how it works. Just like gravity. Or what about electricity? I put my hand in the socket and my foot was grounded and I got shocked. You're going to call Alabama Power and say, hey. <laughs> Y'all are biased against me, aren't you? You're discriminatory against me. Because I got shocked. I don't see anybody else in my neighborhood getting shocked. <laughs> see, it's foolishness in the natural. But it's the same in the spiritual. It's laws. Alabama Power ain't got anything to do with you getting shocked. You had everything to do with shock. Why? Because you didn't heed the laws. It's not that God's saying, well, I'm just going to lightly esteem you because I don't like you. I love everybody in the world, but not you. And that's how we feel, but that's not the case. Listen, God's love is unconditional, but his standards are unchanging. So you're thinking the love has to do with him changing his standards. Love is unchanging, but so is the standards. And you've just bound God. He wants to honor you, but you've got to have the law of honoring him. And there's just, just no wonder there's so many dumbed down thimble, water-deep Christians walking around on planet Earth right now like a bunch of zombies. Because nobody's teaching them the kingdom, how heaven works. They want heaven to invade Earth, but yet they won't. They're not getting it. Since Eli did not correct his sons the way he should, he essentially preferred them to the Lord. And that's why he become lightly esteemed. 
parents? Uh oh. Can the Lord say that about you? You're lightly esteemed because you gave more honor to your children than you did to him? I'm going to let the Holy Spirit talk to you about, about what it looks like in your house. But that ain't going to change. The, this, this word ain't going away. He preferred his sons over the Lord. Amen. Amen. And if Eli were more afraid of offending God and less afraid of offending his sons, he would have corrected them as he should have. Here's a scary thought. If he had done what he was supposed to do a long time ago, the Lord wouldn't have had to said, I've had enough of this stuff. They're doing this in my house. You have got to be kidding me. Oh, no. They're gone. What do you mean they're gone? Let me put it this way. Hoff and I and Phineas were out in the field and walking with God and, and God came back and they didn't. Does that sum it up for you? Yeah. Well, God would never. It did happen. Judgment fell on them. Judgment that gave the enemy access. God didn't want to do that. That was never God's will. God's will was that once again, he's willing that none should perish but all should come to what? Repentance. You think for one second if Hophni and Phinehas, after his dad kicked him out of the, the priesthood and they repented and come before the Lord himself and said, Lord, I have dishonored you. I have disgraced your temple. I own it. I am so sorry. You know what the Lord would have done? Come on. Go ahead and you can, you can do this again. That's the perfect will of the Lord. So everybody want to look at the, I oh, see the Lord won't kill somebody. Why do you take sinful people's perspective and, 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 and position? Why are we so quick to do that? Instead of looking at the Lord's position. I don't want that to happen. Why do you keep being rebellious? Why do you keep going off? And See, we don't really think God's God. Just a, some supernatural force of rules and regulations out there somewhere. Don't think of him as a real person? Being a real king of a real kingdom? <laughs> well, that was kind of hard on them. No, it was, it was hard on God because God never wanted to do that. I wish you would take the same attitude in life about stuff. What if your little sister come out of Walmart and some thug come out and just beat the snot out of her just to get initiation into a gang? Here's, and you know what would really infuriate you? If a group of people got together and said, now, it really wasn't his fault. He's a troubled youth from a young age. He's never had a functional home. He's lived in dysfunction. He just didn't know any better. And we should just have some mercy on him and try to get him some help, you see. And uh, I think charges should be dropped and he should get the help that he needs. Okay, you're the family member and that happened to your sister. You buying into that? See, that's what people do against God. <laughs> well, now, there shouldn't be correction or any kind of judgment or anything. And they're polluting all of God's people. It's hard on the cancer when you cut it out, but it saves the body. Amen. God rejected him for putting his sons ahead of the Lord. God honors those who honor him. I mean, I'm trying to teach you biblical kingdom teaching. I mean, I've had it before. Aren't you just tired of, of just having messages or sermons where they're going, 
it's going to work out. It's going to be okay. It's going to work out. And it don't. Well, there's reasons, but nobody wants to hear the reasons why it don't work. They just want somebody to tell us it's going to be okay. God's got this. God's in control. It's going to be okay. And you are violating so many kingdom principles. You have tied God's hands up in a, in a Navy SEAL kind of a knot. And then you'll blame him. You've tied him up, and yet you're going to blame him. I love you, Lord. Help me. In our perverted world, people are honored who despise God and his ways. You've got movie stars. You've got athletes. You've got politicians. And you've got a bunch of wealthy people whose cumulative integrity wouldn't feel a thimble. But they're the ones on the covers of the magazines. And they're the ones making the news. And God could prick your heart on something and you'd be quick to turn him away. I don't care. But then you hear something like, uh, I don't know, Brad Pitt's cutting a movie in downtown Mobile and I heard he's going to be at such and such place. <gasps> Let's go. Beyonce's doing a signing at such and such store in the mall. I mean, we're talking about like even Chick-fil-A don't have a line that, that long. But yet God Almighty will talk to you in your heart. And, I don't want to hear about that. I don't want to deal with that. I don't want to do that. I don't even want to find out if what the pastor's saying is true. I ain't going to get in that word and go over them scriptures. Very little weight. But when you've tried this, that, and the other, and it goes on and it goes finally. As a last resort, you want to come to God. And you want God to get so serious with you in that moment. Like I said, thank God I'm not God. Because I'd be like, serious? I've been trying to be serious with you for four or five years. You figure it out. Because that's what you've been doing anyway. Why bring me up in this? You ain't going to do nothing I tell you to do. Besides, you want me to snap, crackle, pop, boom, poof, microwave miracle. That ain't, this, that ain't the case. You a mess. There's a lot of stuff you got to change up. Or, well, girl, it's going to come back again and again and again and again. you got to straighten this out. It's going to take time and effort. It's going to cost you something, cost you friends. It's going to definitely. <laughs> but we want, we want you know, God to be like Peter Pan or something. I don't know, just pew, or Harry Potter. And it does not work that way. Praise God it doesn't work that way. That he gives us choice and free will. <sighs> Hallelujah. I figured it would go over about like this, but that's okay. But God doesn't evaluate things the way people do. Stand to your feet as the music plays. Because God honors those who are serving him. I'm telling you, I've seen the world get sucked into it. I've seen somebody who was a famous, whether it's athlete, musician, or whatever, you know, flip script and all of a sudden declare Jesus. And I'm not saying for one minute that their salvation was not real. But you got what the Bible calls a baby Christian who, who, does, who needs to be on the milk of the word. And people following them around like they throwing meat on the table. I mean, thank God for your brother or your sister that finally knew Christ. But you know what they need to do? They need to sit themselves down and start and come under for a while. They can tell the world, Jesus saved me and I love Jesus and stuff like that. But you need to stay off of these shows and the stuff about where they want to ask you questions and, and all of a sudden you're teaching the word. You need to be taught. You need to come under. You need to sit under somebody for seven, eight, nine, ten years. Amen. I mean, that's why you see so many churches all on every quarter in the Bible Belt. Somebody doesn't agree with this, this, yet. I just start another church. So you got babies that are birthing babies that'll birth babies and that'll birth babies. 
And some of the, you know, the ones that have been filled with the Holy Ghost have been doing it 30, 40 years. Now, they, you know, well, they're just not relative and they're outdated. Well, now, Grandma, let me say something to them. They need to be willing to be opened up a little bit when it comes to some things. Amen. I don't want this stage to look like it's 1978. Amen. With all the pretty ferns around and the little stead steps and, you know, having just the natural light on and having the choir in the back, you know. I mean, once again, we went over that. That's a wineskin. God could care less about the wineskin. He's after the wine. He could care less whether you got ferns on the stage and you have an anointing on the stage. But yet they'll think the irrelevant, irrelevancy of, of, of preachers who just walk in close to God and, and young folk don't want nothing to do with that. Don't feel like it's relevant. And we've lost it in the last 15 years because we preferred a latte over the Lord. We want to be served special coffee in the front of the church with a smile than to have a place where you can get some correction and you can grab a tissue and sob before the Lord at repentance. They don't want altars no more. They don't, they don't give time for God to work. And we're in a mess. And this is coming from the church. I said, we're not going to do church. We're going to do heaven. Amen. Christians need to honor those who honor God and lightly esteem those who reject God. When's the last time you boycotted something personally in your house because you know it didn't line up with God and his kingdom? But this is where the rubber meets the road, guys. Why can Nas X get away with everything he's doing? Because people are paying him money. And as long as that money flowing, the record company's going to let him keep going. I've been there. I've been there, you know, with the music scene. I remember hearing a band called Warrant. I don't know if you remember them. They were a hard rock group from the 80s, and their first album was pretty good. The, the, they went in, you know, their second album blew up like crazy, but about that time is when the, the, the new scene, for the Seattle scene come in. <clears throat> and when their second album come out, the, the, they said they walked into the record executive's office and the picture of their album was right there behind his desk. And they were behind them and they were for them and everything. They come in the, on their third album and there was nothing of theirs in there. Big picture of Pearl Jam. So what does that mean? That's like the grocery store. If it's at eye level, it's a hot item, baby. But if it's on the lower aisle, it is not. And if you're on the lower aisle and you're not selling, and you know what the company says? We're not ordering from you anymore. Your stuff doesn't sell. So why is all this crazy music going on? Because people are buying it. Why is these crazy movies going on? Because people are watching it. Let's just be honest with you. Hallelujah. And all these places want your money. But yet that's what the church gets accused of. Oh, they want your money. <laughs> You know, there, I guess there might be some out there. I've heard some crazy things, but there's usually no uh, uh, charge for coming in service. And if you want to give, you give. If you don't, you don't. I mean, but that's not to say about the world. Everywhere you go in the world, you have to pay for it. Go to the gas station, pump it up, and drive off. When the cop pulls you over, well, what did you do that for? Well, I needed gas. But you didn't pay. Well, I didn't have any money. Well, aren't you guys going to be understanding and sympathetic and go to the grocery store and walk out, you know, without paying? It's like, 
That's shoplift. It's like, but I got babies at home and I ain't got enough money. I have to feed them somehow. See how sympathetic the world is to you. And they accuse God's house. My, 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 my. Hallelujah. Immerse yourselves. We've got to immerse ourselves into his kingdom, into his word, into his way of doing things. Because it's a war. It's already it's been going on. Now, I said a few years ago it's getting ready to start. Well, it, it, it started. It, it's been going on ever since the remnant. Remember that message series? God wasn't playing around. Look how much foolishness has happened since then. Really? Do you think it's going to get any better? The world? Not with the church not standing up. They don't even know who they are. Well, they just need some counseling. No, they need a devil cast out of them. See, that's where we're at. Well, I, I need help. What should I do? Well, we'll go to the church for some counseling. Well, there's a place for that. But you, you, got a, you need a devil cast out of you. See, it's offensive to the world. Just imagine how many news reporters would have put Jesus on their... Uh, they would, he'd, they'd have hated Jesus more than they hated President Trump if, uh, if, he, if, if, if it was today's society and, and Jesus went and, and healed the epileptic boy and cast a demon out of him. They're like, what happened? Well, he's foaming at the mouth. Well, get his medication. Well, he doesn't need a medication. He's, he needs a devil cast out of him. <gasps> that poor little boy has a devil. You religious freaks, see how you do things? He just needs some medication is all he needs. It's the science of it. He's got a chemical imbalance, and if he had his medication, he would be fine. But now you're going to accuse him of being a devil? See, that's why nobody wants to come to your churches. See, you just go overboard and go crazy. Why can't you just love the young man and give him, what is your name anyways? Jesus. See, you're crazy, Jesus. And we're going to make sure the world knows too. But no, he had a devil. And as soon as he got a cast out, he was free. Or, or even a better one. Can you imagine the, the widow woman? What if that was on CNN News? Preacher goes to a widow woman's house who has no food and demands that she make him the last meal. Either you're going to be kingdom. Listen, I, I love you, but I'm going to tell you. I've been warning you for years, and you're starting. Some of you are starting to see it. You better get rooted in the kingdom and know how the kingdom operates, because the world is not your friend. And if you keep operating in the world, it's not going to go well for you. Hallelujah! You've got to immerse yourselves.